Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can self-host PicoShare using Docker Compose. Now PicoShare allows you to share images, videos, and pretty much any other file directly from your machines. And then it gives you like a link that you can share with whoever needs that. And then they can connect to your service, your self-hosted service to download that file. Okay, so it's a really easy way to share things just between you and the person connecting. You don't need to worry about, you know, using a public service. Cause sometimes if you're trying to share something, it's not like immediately like secret or anything like that. It's just, you just don't want it to be stored on someone else's device. It's the whole point of self-hosting, right? That's where PicoShare comes in. So with the structure of this, I'm going to show you the demo. I've got a demo and I'll have a link to the demo so you can also have a play around of the service. And then we'll just jump straight into trying to deploy this using Docker Compose. Now, I personally haven't even deployed this yet. Uh, this is kind of the way I do my videos. Uh, we'll have a look at it and we'll try to deploy it and we'll just have a play around and see how it all works. So let's jump into the demo. Right, so this is their demo server that they let us have a play around with. So what we can do, uh, a link to this will be in the description, so check it out if you want to have a play around. So we can click login, and they're saying here the password is just demo, so we'll just hit that. And here we can see it's really straightforward, right? We can upload a file, or we can pay something. But I'm just going to upload a file, so let me just choose an image. Here's a bunch of my thumbnails, let's just go with this one and hit upload. Okay, now we can see we've been able to upload this, right? So essentially all we can do is let's say I wanted to share this with someone, I would copy this link and I'll send it to them. Then they would go to this link, right? So we'll paste this in, hit enter. They'll go to this link and there's the file, right? They can download it and do their thing, right? Click it, add the photos, whatever, okay? So that's essentially what it is. Nice, easy service. I love these sort of services that just do what they say they do and nothing more, okay? That the, the, it's quite nice to have services like that. So let's get into having a look at how we can self-host this ourselves. So this is a GitHub page and it's always good. Like I always mention with a lot of things is you want to see when the last commit was, um, especially if you're going to use a service for something like this, you want to make sure it's actively maintained. And you can see here two days ago was their last commit, which is awesome. So uh, we know this is still actively being worked on. So they've got a bit of an example here, like I've already explained in the demo of ways that you can share files and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's it's very straightforward. So they've got a few ways that we can deploy this. So from source, if we wanted to, uh, they've also got the Docker command here and they've also got um, Docker plus cloud data replication. Uh, we're not, I'm not going to worry about any of this. The one that I'm interested in is just the Docker compose here right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this jump onto my server and i'll put this into a yaml file and then i'll kind of break it down on what's going on and we'll go from there so i'm in my um web server at the moment so what i'm going to do is i am going to go into my docker folder so this is where i store all of my docker containers like the docker and compose files i just separate them nicely like this so i can keep track so we'll make a new one and we'll just call this pico change into there and then we're going to make a docker compose dot yaml file right and we'll paste that's not what i wanted so here copy come back here paste there we go great so let's just have a quick look at what's going on here so we're going to create a service right and it's called pico share which is perfect we're going to use this image and there's a couple environments. So we can see that this is, we're going to access this on port 4001. Okay. So just remember that, make sure you're not using this port already. I know that I'm not. We can see here that there's a secret here that we need to set up. So it's just saying change to any password. So I'll just set this to a super um, secure password. That's pretty much unbreakable. Um, and then we've got ports, right? So 4001, uh, like I mentioned before, this is the port that we're going to access it on. So we'll just leave that as it is. And then it's going to create a data um, volume here, but that's where just everything's going to be stored. It's going to be stored as data, and we'll be able to check that out in a second. But that's essentially it. It's relatively straightforward. It's going to create a container. So on port 4001, and we should be able to access it, and we're probably going to need our password here, which we've set as a super secure password. So we can save this. I'll jump out of it. Let's just clear the screen up a little bit. 
and it's so straightforward to, to spin up docker containers seriously if you if you want to um i've got a guide somewhere uh, i'll link uh on getting started with just self-hosting and to be able to be in this position to follow these commands uh to be able to self-host uh following my videos so go check that out if you're keen to follow along so we can do um docker compose up hyphen d right and hit enter no don't auto complete that's annoying how it does that sometimes there we go so it's going to pull down the latest pico share image you can see it doing that now and that uh, image uh, the containers um set up of eight layers and it's created a network and it's created our container for us and if i've just done that ls but let me just quickly clear the screen so you see how now we've got that data folder that's what it created before that's where it's storing all this information right so that's all good. We're happy with that. Now we can check if this is actually running. We'll just do a docker ps and we'll just group this and see if we can see it's running. There we go. So we can see our Pico is running and it's been uh, it's, uh, it's up for 43 uh, seconds now. And we can see it is running on port 4001. So I need to access my um, the IP address of the server that's running this on port 4001. And if you're interested in trying to figure out what the local IP address is, you can just do like grep 192, because I know my IP address is type 192. And then this is the IP address of my server, right? So we can copy this, jump back to our browser, make a new tab, paste that IP address right at the top and put 4001, hit enter. Look at that. It's our own self-hosted Pico share. <laughs> it's yeah, it's just funny how easy this is to, to get set up, right? And we'll hit login. Now, you, do you remember that super secret password I made that's really unbreakable? We're going to enter that now and hit enter. Just got it's self-hosted. It's running right now. So I can I can upload a file, upload uh, my logo, and there it is. Now the thing is, this is just locally accessible, right? Like, see how it's my local IP address? This is a way I could share um, with everyone on my network that's local that can access this IP address, sure. But what about if we actually want to access this over the internet? And how do we share this? Good question. Let's use what we always use, Cloudflare. So let's jump into Cloudflare. Okay, so we're in my Cloudflare now, and if you're not aware on what Cloudflare is or how it works, I've covered this many times, so I'm going to just refer you back to a video where I cover it more in depth. Uh, if This is just my way that I publicly expose my services that I run locally using Docker containers to the internet, but all being secured by Cloudflare. It means I don't need to port forward. I don't need to worry about any of that stuff. What you're seeing now is the steps I use to literally take a Docker container that's running locally and make it accessible over the internet and protected with um, certificates and all of that good stuff, okay? So what we're going to do is add a public host name. Uh, let's just call this PicoShare. That's gonna be the subdomain. And I'm going to run this on, um, let's put this on the TikTok's domain. Uh, no, actually, we'll run it on the Electron. And we will select HTTP. Now, this is just, so the type isn't the type that I want to be able to access this on, because of course you want to use HTTPS, but it's saying, how do you access this locally? What's like the local um, protocol that you'd use? And we use HTTP to access it locally. And then the IP address that we used was 192.168.68. Dot, good question. Let's have a look. Actually, I can just copy this whole uh, IP address up there, paste it in here, remove that HTTP, but remember that's how we accessed it. Cool. So what we've got here is we're adding a new subdomain, picoshare.elitron.xyz, and we're mapping it to a local IP address of HTTP 192.168.68.119 on port 4001. And I should be able to hit save host name. Done. Now, I should be able to access PicoShare on that uh, domain name. Let's give it a try. PicoShare.elitron.xyz. Hit enter. And there we go. Look at that. Now, my super secret password is very uh, terrible here because anyone could access my Pico share um, and see everything that I have in there. But for a demo purpose, it's fine. 
But there we go. So you can see at the top here, it says picoshare.electron.xyz. And if I choose a file, let's upload my logo again. There we go. Do you see the picoshare.electron.xyz? I can copy this and I'm going to open up a new private browser. That's not cache, doesn't have the password to picoshare or anything like that. I'm going to paste it in here, hit enter, and I can access it just like that. Uh, and anyone could be able to access it. And to prove it to you, I'm going to jump onto my server, which is here. And if I do a wget, paste that domain name in, you can see it was also able to pull the, the logo that I put up. And this isn't authenticated there. It's a whole different device, okay? Uh, it's able to access that domain and pull that image down. And that works with videos and everything. Um, so let's try a video real quick. So let's add another, choose a file. Uh, we'll choose one of these. You can see how many times I attempt to make videos. <laughs> uh, hit upload. There we go. So that's uploaded. And you see we get two types of links, shorts and long ones. Let's, quick, let's try a short one. Make a new tab. Paste that in. Hit enter. And there's my face. <laughs> there we go. Uh, a bit of inception of my face. <laughs> but that is essentially PicoShare. So besides just the, the upload sort of things, you can see here if I come in the files, you can see the files that I have uploaded um, and you can clean them out uh, here as well. You can see some information on what's going on with them, um, how many down downloads and whatnot there has been of them. Uh, we can click edit and we can also delete them if we want. So we can delete that. And then what we've also got here uh, under guest links, so it says here, guest links allow other users to upload files to our PicoShare. So if we want to... If someone wants to give us a file and, uh, you know, they don't want to paste it on somewhere public and it's a bit hard for them to send it to us in some way, this is their way for them to be able to connect to our PicoShare server and upload something. So we can generate a new one and we can call this um, test, right? And does this expire? We can say when. We'll say, hey, look, you've got about a day to be able to, to use this and upload. We can set some limitations, but let's hit create. Now, if we copy this and then we'll make a, another private tab, and we'll paste this in. We'll, now we're role playing as a, a guest to our PicoShare. Hit enter. Now you see that they get away. They're not logged in in the top right hand corner, but they've got a link to be able to directly upload something. So let's just click another video of mine and hit upload. And there you go. So now they've uploaded that new file. If we go back to our version, right, files. You can see now there's that, that that mp4 again so let's just double check that again so let's come back here upload another choose a file uh, let's use something else let's go back to pictures my thumbnails let's use this qubit torrent upload let's go back do a refresh we should see four files here now we do so this is their way not only for you to be able to upload files and share them, but also to be able to invite others to upload directly to your server so you can um, receive files and whatnot as well. Directly to you, no middleman. There we go. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I try to make these videos, especially when I'm just covering a server, straight to the point. You know, you don't need to have much more than that. Um, if you've got any questions, there's the whole process is pretty much covered by either this video or many other videos. So getting started with docker and getting your machine up and running to be able to get to a point to follow this video follow um the video that i suggested before and then if you want to understand cloudflare and how you can expose your services using cloudflare i've got that video that i mentioned before as well both of those videos will also be in the description of this video um so if you follow those you'll be able to get to this point and self-host pico share yourself but thank you so much for all your support uh remember i've got a discord members uh, youtube members get one-on-one -on -one support with me um yeah and just appreciate all the support it's um it's been a lot of fun and uh yeah i love interacting with each and every one of you so have a great one um and i'll see you in the next video bye bye